everybody welcome to rdc's speak life podcast um want to thank you all for watching us and listening listening to us you can find me on spotify please follow coming soon to additional platforms normally i just do a little talk to encourage you but you know i know a very encouraging young man who's uh, on the verge to incredible greatness and influence here in hollywood he's a graduate of DePaul university 2017 um, he is from Cle cleveland ohio <laughs> and um, he's an award-winning animator and let me introduce you to mr chas bottles hi hey thanks for uh having me on super dope uh yeah it's great to be here oh well, yeah gl glad to have you here can you tell me, you have a production company. What's the name of your production company? Uh, CBA Studios. We're a uh, animation production company based in uh, North Hollywood. Mm -hmm. um, we've worked with a ton of clients, uh, mainly kind of in the music video space. Uh, we work with John Legend, Steve okay. Harvey, Little Nas X. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so it's it's been really fun. Um, I'm coming too, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, and it's also... Uh, and in addition to being a production house, uh, it also houses uh, original IP that we develop uh, content. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. You, you guys hear that? Once again, <laughs> we're, we're talking with Chaz Bottoms. Uh, he's an incredible animator out here. He is blowing up Hollywood, uh, blowing up the world with a, a lot of his work here. He has an upcoming production entitled Batu, which will be coming out uh, very soon. Yeah. We had a little de uh, delay just because of you know, what's happening in the world. Everything. Tell us a little bit about Batu. Yeah, uh, so Batu is a animated musical set in Chicago. Mm -hmm. um, and it's about two friends, Otis and Jada, who compete for a spot in a uh -huh. prestigious uh, summer dance troupe. Um, and it's, it's super dope because it's based on uh, this real art form that developed in Chicago, uh -huh. hip lay, hip which lay. is a combination of hip hop and ballet. Oh, wow. Um, and so, you know, I went to school in Chicago and I was very inspired by the art scene, just the collaborative nature of all these super talented Midwestern folk mm. uh, kind of coming together from all different walks of life and uh, creating. And so it's kind of uh, also operates as my love letter to Chicago. Really? Yeah. You know, you, you, you said a lot of things in there. Um, one, your love letter to Chicago. Uh, you said hip lay. It's like you said hip hop and ballet. Mm -hmm. Is that something that I could probably learn? You know. Oh yeah, I, mean, <laughs> I can still learn you know, how to do that. It's all hip hop moves, but it's on point. Like you Ooh, know, on so, the toes. Yeah, on the toes. So that's. Uh, I mean, you might have to practice a little there, uh, but you know, it was great because before I started production, I uh, flew to um, Chicago to get the blessing of the founder, who um, is a man by the name of Homer Hans Bryant. Oh. Uh, who did choreography for the original movie, uh, The Wiz. Oh, wow. The OG flick. Yeah, so he's a super talented dancer, and uh, he actually teaches, you know, hip play in Chicago, so he's, uh, you know, he, he still does it and still wants to kind of give back, and so mm -hmm. I definitely needed his blessing kind of before I started the production, and uh, okay. he's super excited about it. He's a character in it, um, <laughs> <laughs> plays himself, um, but yeah, you know, I really wanted to just kind of have this authentic Chicago feel. Ah, I like that. So is that what made you fall in love with Chicago or was it just your time there? Cause, oh, I forgot to mention, he is an ex-college uh, athlete too. He ran track in college too. So, yeah, you know. definitely. And you know, I think track played a huge kind of role in getting me, you know, through school. Um, and definitely, you know, it was hard to find a school that had like a, Division one track program and an animation program. It's actually very hard. I can't even know it's art and sports. So you know those two typically conflict, and they did. You know, often <laughs> throughout my my college career. Um, but I think you know the time I was there, Cancer Rapper was blowing up. Yeah. Chief Keef was rising. You know, Chicago was really starting to, uh, you know, take notice of the music industry and be like, you know, we're here. We have original mm -hmm. uh, artists who you know are producing really dope music, and so. You know, I was kind of there when that energy was really forming, and you know, I definitely think I took it and kind of ran with it, just being in school and like learning, you know, the ins and outs of animation, and yeah, just really starting to think about what I want my career to look like post grad, 
And I think it, it all just kind of marinated into what Batu kind of is, you know. I like that. Question. Animation. Yes. What made you fall in love with cartoons? I know I loved cartoons when I was a kid. <laughs> I yeah. still like cartoons. I still watch them to this day. So what made you fall? We have some viewers too. Hey, what's up, everybody? Thanks for viewing. Yo. Uh, I'm sitting here with Chaz Bottoms. He is an award-winning animator here in Hollywood, also from Cleveland, Ohio, mm -hmm. uh, sharing his story. He's, he's very inspiring. He is encouraging. He is somebody you want to follow uh, that Chaz... Draws. Chaz Draws on yeah. IG, then Chaz McFly, Twitter. You can find him everywhere. But... I really admire and respect this young man. So back to animation. Yeah. What gave you a love for animation? Uh, a lot like you, I, I love cartoons growing up kind of pretty much from the jump. I'm pretty sure the first movie I ever saw was Lion King because it just come out on VHS like yeah. when I was born. And I did cry. Yeah. I cried when <laughs> you know, Mufasa died. So. Oh, man. Yeah. And so, you know, uh, I kind of early on, you know, knew I had a fascination for just drawing. Yes. And so... Um, originally wanting to just kind of be like a author illustrator mm -hmm. um, and then you know my love for cartoons around the age of like eight or nine I started realizing like oh wait this is like a job like you know <laughs> it all kind of finally clicked that like yeah those credits the, the those people you know their names these are actual people and this is like it's like what my parents do instead of going to work you know they they go make cartoons. That didn't seem like work to me. And the fact that it was like a job, I was like, that's that's what I want to do. <laughs> um, and so from there, I started just kind of self-teaching myself. Mm -hmm. uh, any books that I could get my hands on, any like special features on like DVDs that where they were like showing the making of yes. cartoons, I would like just study and just go through reams and reams of paper. Like <laughs> pre-digital days. So I'm like testing animation like I had like a little white box and everything. Really? Yeah. Did you have a page turner like? Yeah, you, you did. Oh yeah, wow! I had, like literally, like the Disney guys, like yeah, all on hand. And you know, I mean, props to my parents for always just like supporting me, like along the way. You know, really encouraging me to you know not, uh, you know, keep going like artistically, and yeah. you know, wanting to provide the things that you know would help put me in a place to be successful you hear that parents if you have a child who is expressing gifts whether it's leadership creative gifts whatever help nurture those gifts yeah um find out what your child likes to do because they could be the next Chaz bottoms coming out uh, which i really do believe i i was talking with Chaz, uh, i think maybe last week or so yeah and i was like i believe he's going to make uh, an animated show that's going to just blow up out here and he's going to be like the Seth MacFarlane's and all these guys. He's going to have his show. So get ready. Um, there are studios that are interested in this young man. So you might, you definitely want to follow him and see what's up with his life. Um, he's, he has a lot going on. So you going to share, share something else real quick? Yeah. And, um, and um, you know, so just like growing up and loving animation, I think I'm, I'm lucky in that it's, I knew what I wanted to do for the rest of my life very early yes. like and you know I still very much so have that same passion and you know it's been crazy to see just like how far I came um last week was my birthday so I'm 25 oh yeah now. he's 25 y'all <laughs> you know his car insurance went down a little bit it did, it did. <laughs> I was very happy when I got that email some good news in this these bleak times <laughs> oh yeah we need it every yeah every bit of good news we can use right absolutely <laughs> you know what can you share um you know I've known you for I think about a year and a half now. Yeah. And can you share, there was a point in life in your life that you had to deal with a certain struggle. Yeah. And how you came through that, because I think some people need to hear that. That's what we're about. Yeah. We're speaking life. Absolutely. <laughs> so, yeah. So, like I, like you talked about, I went to school in uh, Chicago, DePaul, but I'm from Cleveland. And so, you know, it's my freshman year and it's maybe like track, it's track orientation. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to like, um, there's all these kind of like doctor tests that they bring in, you know, with, through their athletic department. Yes. Um, and they kind of run these, it's basically like a super advanced physical. Okay. Um, Something that I, I could probably pass too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, you're just buttering me up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, you know, they kind of pulled me aside, you know, after 
a couple of days had like passed me. You know, I I thought I had cleared everything. Um, come lo and behold, that uh, actually uh, was pre. I was in the early stages of uh, testicular cancer. Wow. And and you were a freshman in college. I was eighteen. And this is wow. like a okay. disease that normally hits like middle aged men. <laughs> like yeah. it's definitely like it's rare that you find it in someone this young. And so, you know, I had just gotten there mm-hmm. and I'm thinking like, dang, I don't know anybody in this city. Like my uh parents are six hours away. It's the farthest I've ever been away from like family. Yeah. And I just wanna like run track. Like that's what I came <laughs> here for, like what's going on. Um, because that also then presented the potential to like not be able to run track anymore right or at least not that year right um and so luckily we caught it you know super early and i was able to have surgery Mm -hmm. um i didn't need chemo luckily my numbers went down but basically i was you know i was kind of out for six to eight weeks that fall oh wow basically i was uh i wasn't able to really practice at all like that whole first quarter at the really yeah but um I would I would I would sneak off you know I would I would go to practice and see like what they did mm-hmm. and then I would come back to the rec later okay. and then I would do the workout. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, so that's somebody who has a made up mind that no yeah. just, no situation's gonna stop. I'm still you know they tell me not to do it but they don't have to see me there. Yeah, because yeah. I mean after the surgery like it was just a matter of healing. Yes. And uh, so once I felt good enough to have you know not tear anything or you know go out there I was like all right well. It seems like the possibility to compete this year is still probable. Right. Um, and, you know, I didn't want to, like, have to stay an extra year. I really wanted to be in and out four years in college. I, I didn't want to. You, yeah. <laughs> and so anything that, you know, kind of would prevent me from doing that, I kind of wanted to get in, in front of. And luckily, yes. uh, I was able to still compete that indoor season. So mm-hmm. I actually was able to run in our first meet. My oh, surgery wow. was... End of September, our first meet was the first week of December. Dang. Okay, that was a major recovery. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, when you were going through that time, um, what what gave you the drive? I, you explained some of the things, but most people, their first year in college, you come into school, you're so excited to get away from your family. Yeah. And feel this. I tell everybody, college is a fantasy world. You get yeah. the, all the adult benefits without the adult responsibilities. Yeah. <laughs> so so <That's>, you, yeah. <laughs> you, you're ready to go, and all of a sudden you get this pretty much a month into your first year of college. Yeah. What, what kept, like, what was the thing that you held on? What was your why, the, the real strong thing that just kept you going every single day? Um, you know, it, it kind of balanced me out in a way where, it sucked, but things could have been worse. Okay. And I and I think you know that kind of. I've always been a pretty positive, like glass half full type of guy. I feel that. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and so, um, you know, luckily I was, I had my athletics family. You know, yes. so I, my roommates were also uh, track people. Mm-hmm. You know, I had the whole like athletic center, and so, they, it kind of forced them to kind of streamline that process of like me fitting in and becoming a part of the DePaul track and athletics family. Yes. Um, just because they were like, they, you know, they wanted to make sure that I was good too. So, yeah. you know, I definitely had that, um, you know, support system. And then, you know, my parents, they were, they came in for the surgery. My mom stayed in Chicago for like two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, and so like that initial kind of just support was like, Yo, like I'm a, I'm gonna be alright. Like, you know, like <laughs> it could be worse. Like, yeah. and you know, I, I had previously had this big love for Chicago. Like, yeah. I really loved that city. You like the pizza there? I, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. The public transportation system. You don't need oh, a yeah, car. You don't need a car. You don't need a car. Oh, man. It's great. Um, yeah, I need that feeling. Like <laughs> <laughs> no traffic. Um, and so you know, I love that city so much, and I knew. I kind of felt like this was a test, like, yeah, if you can get through this and still be successful, like, what, what is, what's, what's, what's going to be in your way, you know, like, from here on out. If you guys are listening to this, um, Chaz is an amazing young man. He just turned 25. He was sharing. He's an animator here in Hollywood. Uh, you can IG him on at Chaz Draws. 
follow him on Twitter, Chaz McFly. He has some funny takes. I, I mm-hmm. laugh at him all the time. Um, he has worked with, just give me a, a list again real quick. Who have you worked with again? Because we have some new people yeah. signing in. So thank you all. Uh, John Legend, mm-hmm. Steve Harvey, mm-hmm. Little Nas X, Foot Locker, Denzel Curry. Man, I thought you were going to say Denzel Washington. I was nah, like, really? I, I, hopefully. So he got a cartoon? <laughs> <laughs> so I got hopefully. A <laughs> and you can actually watch their cartoons that Chaz has worked on. They're, like Steve Harvey posts a lot yeah. of the cartoons on Twitter. If you follow Steve Harvey, you'll see a lot. Of John Legend, yeah. I follow him and I've seen him post them. So it's pretty cool to see like somebody I know who's doing some incredible work out here, connected yeah. with the industry from Cleveland, Ohio. Absolutely. There's a lot of good things that come out of Cleveland. And uh, for those of you guys who talk about Ohio, there's a lot of good stuff that comes out of Ohio. Yeah. Um, as we prepare to close out, like what, what upcoming projects that you can talk about would you want to share with us? And also, what is the, if you had one piece of advice to give to the next generation coming up, yeah. animators, creatives, what piece of advice would you give to them? So those two. Definitely. Um, so the thing that I'm, that's more time consuming than anything else right now is tattoos. Yeah. Um, you know, the biggest thing about that is it is a, it's a standalone short film, but it's also a proof of concept for something bigger. Mm-hmm. You know, that story just doesn't doesn't end right there. Yes. And so there are plans for you know future Batu media, and so a lot of it is just you know grinding that out but we're also still just finishing the short yes (laughs) animation takes a long time that's uh that's one thing that really uh, animation so you can't just get something done for me in a a week huh (laughs) i mean it's gonna be very expensive (laughs) (laughs) you hear that animators have to work very very hard for some some of you guys who think oh it's just it's a cartoon it probably doesn't take that much effort it's a lot of work. You it's have physical a crew labor, you have to hire. Drawing all day. Drawing all day. You yeah. have actors who are the voiceovers you got to hire. It's very methodical. <laughs> you know, it goes step by step. And so, oh. you know, it, it's hard to rush all those steps. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, but we've been working on that too since I, I wrote the first draft in October 2018. Mm-hmm. Do you hear that? <laughs> October 2018 is when he wrote it. So, some of you guys out there who have projects you're working on, I'm raising my hand. And my project is a short that's out too, and you, it takes time. Yeah. You know, it's like my project is nine to six months old. His project, a year and a half old pretty much. Yeah. And getting to the point of the quality that he wants to get out there to take it to the next level. Absolutely. So this is not something, this, this is a, marath- a marathon. This industry is about marathons, and you have to be built for it. I always uh, I like to equate it to it's almost like uh, you're a chef and you want to bake you want to take your time baking as opposed to microwaving yeah you know you, know, you get the little yeah spoon and then, you know <laughs> taste it like ah oh, don't exactly. taste right yeah you know when you reheat up food you know it tastes a little bit better when you put it in the oven as opposed to microwaving that's because the juices marinate in it yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> absolutely you know so um but yeah and then, yeah. Um, you know, so we should be done with Batu in a, in a few weeks. Okay. It's very close. Uh, it's just last stages of animation, but voices, music, it's all recorded. Wow. Can't wait to share it with you guys. There'll be a soundtrack component. To a soundtrack. It. I didn't sing on it, so. <laughs> but I still think it's good. The whole cast <laughs> is from Chicago, too. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's really dope. Um, wow. And, you know, advice that I would give to the next generation of artists mm-hmm. is now more than ever, you have the access to tools to you know help further your interest in development yeah you know like I talked about me growing up and having to look at DVD bonus features and read books you know now there's YouTube tutorials there's yeah. uh, resources there's Twitter like there's online communities that you can join and get feedback on and mm-hmm. um, I think that's a really powerful powerful tool um, because it kind of allows it shows that you can you can make whatever it is you want you yeah. know, you don't need anybody's permission. You just, if you have a plan and you have, you know, the community uh, that you think it serves, yes. that, you know, go on, go for it. There's, there should be nothing in your way. Ah. Do you got, I hope you guys are listening to the wisdom of this 25-year-old young man who I believe will be a millionaire in the next five years, at maybe maybe less than that, because I'm, I'm going to be a millionaire too. So 
So millionaires gotta run together. So we'll be <laughs> running together. We'll be running together. Yeah. Um, and by Chaz having the type of mindset and the drive he has, he's attracted support from some very influential people who help support your project. You know, yeah. if you're free to talk about any, you want to share anybody who's been able to help, like just get the word out even more for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, there's several. You know, we did a Kickstarter campaign for Batu, and I think mm -hmm. that was huge in that it just it was a way for me to just show people hey this is what I'm working on yeah uh, a very direct way to be like this is the concept and this is everything yeah and so you know that was able to get a lot of support from Matthew Cherry um, hair love did you Oscar say Oscar winning, Oscar winner yeah, Oscar, Oscar winning creator caught wind of your project yeah, yeah uh -huh. and he you know he, he threw a lot of support behind it um, another person I have to shout out is uh, Josiah Johnson who's uh, NBA Twitter famous. Uh, <laughs> he, he created this animated show on Comedy Central mm -hmm. uh, called Legends of Chamberlain Heights. Oh, wow. That ran for a few years, uh, oh. 2015 to 2017, I believe. Uh -huh. um, but he, you know, is someone who has always been really supportive and, you know, wants to see me succeed just as bad, you know. Yes. And so I think it helps just being able to kind of have those people in your corner. And, you know, I ask them questions all the time. I would send, I've sent them so much of like this bad two stuff as it's yeah. been, you know, getting worked on. And, you know, I think it, it helps about that community and having people that you can share the work with and get feedback on it all just goes from that. Cause you know, animation's kind of remote. You kind of produce it and you kind of in, in your lab. lab. <laughs> yeah, in a lab in a cave, you know, and you emerge months later, like beard way longer. I haven't cut my hair since I started Batu. Like, you know, like now is that is that part of the Batu movement? You're not cutting your hair until you finish it? Yes, that is. Oh, uh, I, was, yeah. I was always curious because I was like, man, Chad's got a lot of hair. I was like, but so so that's the whole tie in. Mm -hmm. When Batu releases, he'll have a ball head and he'll get he's gonna cut it real well. No literally. <laughs> well um I wanna thank you all for listening. Um once again, you can catch up with Chaz at IG Chaz Draws. Mm -hmm. Chaz Draws. Instagram Chaz McFly. Uh, YouTube. What's the YouTube page? Because I think you have a YouTube page for your production company too. I do. You yeah. know, if you, my name is very specific, if you Google Chaz Bottoms, you'll find me. <laughs> There's not too many people out there last name Bottoms. So the mayor yeah. of Atlanta. Yeah, there you go. There's a few bottoms. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> So look for bottoms. Check out. Well, no, you don't want to look for bottoms on YouTube. You might be, have to be careful how you type that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> be careful. Put Chaz in front of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Put Chaz in front of that. And um, you can listen to this podcast if you want to hear more because it will be playing on Spotify, RDC, Speak Life Sessions. Uh, I am an actor out here. I'm a life coach, a motivational speaker, author, and podcaster. So I love telling positive stories. I love encouraging people. I want people to live their best life. As I always close my program, remember three things. Remember to love God, love yourself, and love people. I will see you very soon. Thank you very much.